Remain standing as we read this passage of scripture into your hearing, starting at verse number 18, reading down through verse number 29. Then will the Lord be jealous of his land and pity his people. Yea, the Lord will answer and say unto his people, Behold, I will send you corn and wine and oil, and ye shall be satisfied therewith. And I will no more make you a reproach among the heathen. But I will remove far off from you the northern army and will drive him into a land barren and desolate with his face toward the east sea and his hinder part toward the utmost sea. His stink shall come up and his ill savor shall come up because he hath done great things. Fear not, O land, be glad and rejoice, for the Lord will do great things. Be not afraid, ye beasts of the field, for the pastures of the field, I'm sorry, for the pastures of the wilderness do spring. For the tree beareth her fruit, the fig tree and the vine do yield their strength. Be glad then, ye children of Zion, and rejoice in the Lord your God. For he hath given you the former rain moderately, and he will cause to come down for you the rain, the former rain, and the latter rain in his first month. And the floors shall be full of wheat, and the vats shall overflow with wine and oil. And I will restore to you the years that the locust hath eaten, the canker worm, and the caterpillar, and the palmer worm, my great army which I sent among you. And ye shall eat in plenty and be satisfied. And praise the name of the Lord your God that hath dealt wondrously with you. And my people shall never be ashamed. And ye shall know that I am in the midst of Israel and that I am the Lord your God and none else. And my people shall never be ashamed. And it shall come to pass afterward that I will pour out of my spirit uh, on all flesh and your sons uh, and your daughters shall prophesy. Uh, your old men shall dream dreams uh, and your young men shall see visions uh, and also upon the servants uh, and upon the handmaids in those days uh, will I pour out uh, of my spirit. Hallelujah to God. The word of the Lord today, revival. 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 Hallelujah. You may be seated in the name of Jesus Christ. Are you praying for your pastor? For I've been praying all week long. And I've been praying all morning long. Got up early this morning. Just praying before the Spirit of God. Because I believe that the Holy Ghost wants to bless and touch. And to do something new today. I believe that God has a blessing for you. That he intends to impart. But he wants your heart and mind prepared. For the great revival that he has in store for you today. Now last Sunday was Pentecost Sunday. It was the time to officially acknowledge this great Jewish feast. And because I was incapacitated and unable at that time to preach the word, we were blessed by Elder Negron to hear the word of God, asking if we were out of our minds. And yes, we need to be in the mind of Christ and out of our own mind. But we missed an opportunity to partake in the glory that is Pentecostal Sunday. 
Now there are four Jewish spring feasts or festival, things that happen in the springtime for the Jews. The Feast of Pentecost is the last of four of those feasts, the previous three being Passover, unleavened bread, and first fruits. We know every feast has a spiritual significance, Passover being the passing over of our sins through the blood of Jesus. Jesus Christ, the unleavened bread being the giving of the broken body of Jesus Christ as a lamb without spot or without blemish or without wrinkle, and the feast of first fruits, which is indeed the resurrection itself. Just as Jesus rose on the third day, even we have the ability to rise, to walk in newness of life. All of these feasts speak to salvation, God's desire to bring you out of the grips of death ha, and to instill in you ha, life eternal ha, through Jesus Christ. Um, how many are glad they know who Jesus is? Hallelujah. We understand the power of these festivals because they point to Jesus Christ. And technically, the Feast of Pentecost is the concluding feast of this Jewish period of festivals known as the Festival of Weeks or as Shavuot. Shavuot being a Jewish word which means weeks. Shavuot or the Feast of Weeks is so called because it was celebrated for seven weeks uh, beginning with the feast of first fruits uh, which again deals with this resurrection of Jesus from the dead uh, and ended with the feast of Pentecost uh, when the Lord sent the Holy Ghost uh, to dwell on the inside of us. Uh, hallelujah it was a time to look forward uh, mm, to the bounty mm, that Jesus had promised to those uh, who will put their trust in them uh, as I taught to you on Thursday John 10 and 10 the thief cometh not but to kill to steal and to destroy but Jesus came that you might have life that I might have life and that I might have it more abundantly how many are looking for abundant life in Christ Hallelujah. I'm talking today about your revival. Ah, with your revival is going to come abundance. With your revival is going to come some restoration. And so this feast of Pentecost occurred over, or the feast of weeks, occurred over seven weeks. And after the 70th, 70th or 7th week, the conclusion of that, which is 49 days, then we would have the next day which would be the 50th day. And so the word Pentecost is Greek for 50. That's all it means is 50. Hallelujah. But we know that 50th day had great significance because we know in the New Testament it is written that when the day of Pentecost was fully come, hallelujah, then something dynamic happened for the church of Jesus Christ. How many are saved today? How many have the Holy Ghost speaking with other tongues? How many have joy down on the inside because of salvation? Hallelujah! We praise God because this Pentecost represents the culmination of the promise of God that I'm going to revive you, that I'm going to do something to you. Yes, it's going to be more than just an intellectual experience, but I'm going to come inside and step inside of you and I'm going to change you. If there's a Jewish festival that everybody who's Christian should celebrate, it is Pentecost. Pentecost. We should celebrate this because from a New Testament perspective we are introduced to Pentecost in the book of Acts. It is the 50th day after the resurrection of Jesus Christ where he told his apostles, go tarry, wait until you be endued with power from on high. Does anybody here 
have the Holy Ghost today? Did anybody here tarry? Did anybody here wait until God filled them with the power of the Holy Ghost just like the Bible says? Oh my God. Jesus told his disciples, I'm going to do something to you. I'm going to do something with you. But before I do it, I want you mentally to get into a state where you're waiting for me to step inside of you. They didn't fully understand what was going to happen to them. They just knew Jesus made a promise. Go ye into Jerusalem and wait there until you receive power from on high. This is why some people struggle with Jesus Christ. They never wait until they receive power from on high. Anybody in here today have power from on high? I'm talking the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah. Down on the inside. I know I got it. Preacher, how you know you got it? Because because one day when I didn't know nothing about nothing, all I knew was somebody said, wait and receive the Holy Ghost. I began to cry out to God looking for the Holy Ghost. And I speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave utterance. Hallelujah. As I waited and waited and waited, but not down and out, but with joy. I waited until I received this thing, how this spirit and call the Holy Ghost. And this is what Peter's preaching in Acts chapter 2, verses 1 through 4. It says, And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, and they were all with one accord and in one place, and suddenly, and there came a sound from heaven like yes, a rushing and mighty wind. How many are waiting for you suddenly? How many are waiting for God to suddenly, suddenly do something for you? This is what God wants to do. He wants to move in you suddenly. The sound came from heaven like a rushing mighty wind. And it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared. It wasn't only just this experience on the inside. They had a physical, visual manifestation. There appeared unto them cloven tongues like as a fire. And it sat on each of them. How many have had the Holy Ghost sit on you? How many have had the Holy Ghost sit on you? Oh yeah, oh yeah. I'm talking about the power of God resting on you. Hallelujah. And that's what this spirit did. It rested upon each of them. And they were all filled, the Bible says, with the Holy Ghost. And began to speak with other tongues as a spirit gave them utterance. This is the very first preaching of New Testament salvation. Peter being in due with power from on high God having sent down the promise of the Holy Ghost no more intellectualism no more religion no more rules now I got relationship hey I have relationship with Jesus Christ he did something inside of me he changed me he moved me he re ordered uh, the way I think uh, and what I feel. Uh, and so Peter uh, preached this thing. Uh, on this day, this is the first sermon preached in the New Testament about this new experience of having the Spirit poured out on the inside. Every disciple of Jesus Christ has the right to receive the Holy Ghost with power. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, have you received the Holy Ghost since you believe? 
<laughs> See, the crust of this sermon was hinging upon the prophecy that was revealed as spoken by the prophet Joel under the prophetic power of the Holy Ghost. That's where we started here in Joel chapter 2. This prophetic scripture, God was making an understanding for his people, an understanding by the grace of God. I want to take you into today. This wasn't just God just speaking into the air with no reason or no purpose. But the background concerning this prophecy is regarding revival and restoration of a nation of Israel following their 70 years of exile in Babylon. How many know that God's desire was always to bless his people, to bring them into a land that flowed with milk and honey. He brought them out of Egypt by his mighty outstretched arm, just like he said he would. He showed himself strong. Every demon, every devil, Every battle they had to fight, God went before them and he fought their battles. God made water out of the rock. God gave them quail to eat. God healed their bodies when they were rebellious and when they sinned. God lifted up a serpent brazen that all they had to do was look and live. Everything they needed, God provided. And he brought them out of Egypt. He brought them out of the world into the promised land. How many of us are out of Egypt? How many of us have been out of the world? God brought us out of the world. And he brought us into the church. That's God's promised land. This is a place that flows with milk and honey. Some of you all don't know this. Because you haven't been in a real church. Where the power of God is working. God wants to change your life. Completely and totally will you come out of the world. You're out of the world. Hey, liberated from sin to walk in the newness of life, to walk in the promised land where the grapes are huge, where the honey is huge, oh, where the liberty is huge. God has made a way for you out of sin in the church. But there's a problem. Hallelujah. See, some of us, although we made it out, we broke out of the world. We ran into the church and into the promised land. But something happened. We got in the promised land and something started going on. We were in a place of blessing, but we stopped blessing God. We were in a place of deliverance, but we stopped seeking deliverance. We were in a place of praise, but we stopped praising. We start acting like heathen, like we don't know what we're doing. But how many know that everything that has bread? Praise God. These people got into the promised land and they lost their mind. And God had given them escape out of Egypt. They had clean escaped out of Egypt. Now they're in the promised land. But they lost their mind. Hallelujah, they were out of their mind. But not in a good way in this case. And so they got to the point. Where God said, I got to judge you. I got to deal with your sin. Hallelujah. Saints of God. The Lord Jesus Christ loves us. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, Jesus loves you. This I know. For the Bible tells me so. Yeah, it's true. Jesus loves you. But how many know God's going to judge your sin? There's nobody, there's no one who gets away. God is going to judge what is not right. And so these people who he had brought out the promised land, oh, are brought out of Egypt and into the promised land. Now the very God that brought them out is judging them. And saints of God, by the Spirit of God, I'm telling you today, some of you are in here and you're going 
going through judgment right now. God is judging your life. He's looking at situations and he's exposing to you the shortnesses and the weaknesses and the faults and the failures. Not because he wants to destroy you, but because he loves you. Oh, and he's got a blessing headed your way. But you got to endure. You got to go through. You cannot be a weak Christian. You cannot be weak in your mind. You have to say yes, Lord. Yes to your will. And yes to your way. God is judging you. The Bible says if judgment begins at the house of God, where shall the ungodly and the sinner appear? God starts with us, saints. In examining us uh, and to see uh, whether we be in the fear. And this is not something you have to fear. Uh, you should run to Jesus. Uh, you should run to the cross. Uh, you should run there and say, Jesus, uh, here I am. Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. Uh, search me, Lord. Uh, see if there be uh, any wicked way in me. Uh, and if there is, take it out uh, so I can be uh, all that you want me to be. Uh, God will always judge your sin. Uh, no sin ever gets by God. He sees it all. Oh, you can't shut God. You can't jive God. He sees everything. He's not like a man that you can fool and pull the wool over his eyes. You might even try to do that to me. I don't have perfect knowledge and understanding. But God does. And he sees you. No sinner will ever prosper. Preacher, why are you talking to us about this? Because I need you to come along with me. Because we're going to a special place. We're going to a place of revival. We're going to a place of restoration. But you can't get there if you don't face your sin. If you don't face your shortcoming. If you say, Lord, change me. It's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. I I need a change. Oh God, I know that in man it is not his way to order his steps. I know I need you every day. How many here need Jesus? How many need him? I mean need him. Oh, I need the Lord. I can't do it by myself. If I try to do it by myself, I'm a fail. But God has made a way that I can make it. God, again, judging his people. Said, so don't be deceived. If you deal with sin, I'ma find it out. Your sin, Moses said, shall find you out. It's gonna find itself manifesting itself so everybody can see it. It won't just be under the carpet, it's gonna be out there for everybody to see. Hallelujah, preacher. Why are you telling us this? Because I want you to uncover your own sin. I want you to to forsake your own sin. For if you forsake it, you will find mercy, but you got to forsake it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. How many want to search yourself? Search me, Lord. Search me, Lord. How many are willing to say, search me, Lord. See if there be any wicked way in me and lead me in the path of righteousness. How many are willing, even right now, to say, search me. Look into me. See, oh God. What's going on inside of me that I might be what you want me to be. And so God, although he had delivered his people and brought them into the promised land, he got to the point where he had to drive them out of the very promised land he gave them because they had chosen to disobey. How many want to abide in the church forever? I never want to lose my spot in the church. I got to praise God. I got to praise God. I got to praise God. Jesus said, none can pluck you out of his hand. He's got you in the very hollow of his hand. 
But you've got to be willing to let the Lord do for you and you what he wants to do. Right now, the Spirit of God is moving in this sanctuary. He's probing and he's looking and he's searching to find your heart, to see where your thoughts are because he wants to deliver you. Hallelujah. Some of you, again, have been driven out of your promised land. You're no longer in your place of blessing, not the place that God brought you out of to be when he first saved you, when he first brought you into the church. You were experiencing great blessings and great wonders. Now you're in a dry and a thirsty land. And sometimes you're wondering, is God even there? Because things are so bad. Because things are so tumultuous. You're no longer abiding in the promised land. But here comes the prophecy of the book of Joel. Oh, what God said. After your captivity. After your 70 years in Babylon. I'm going to bring you again. Unto your place. Unto the promised land. I'm going to bring you back. God is bringing you back. Hallelujah. From your situation into the promised land. He's bringing you back to a place of milk and honey. And to a place of bounty and plentifulness. See, you were driven out of your promised land before. But not anymore. God is bringing you back to the promised land. After a period of time where you've been out there on your own, now God is moving to bring you back into a place of prosperity. God is going to revive you. Woo! He's going to revive you. He's going to bring you not from, not from Egypt, but from Babylon. He's going to bring you from that north country. Ah, oh, where the devil was driving you. He's going to bring you back into your promised land. He's going to bring you back, Sister Lamar, into your land that's flowing with milk and honey. Why is he doing it? Because he's good. Hallelujah. He said, after 70 years, I'm going to visit you. I'm going to come back. I'm going to reestablish you. And you won't be talking about Egypt no more. You'll be talking about Babylon. How I came out of Babylon. I was once saved. I got cold. But God lit me up again. Hey, with fire. God revived me. He revived me. He revived me. And this is what he told his people. After 70 years, you all been in Babylon. I'm going to visit you. And I'm going to regather you out of all the places where you, you've been driven. I'm going to regather you. Hallelujah. Out of Meriden. Or out of Cromwell. Out of New Britain. Out of wherever that place is y'all live. Oh, I can't remember the name. Hallelujah. Out of Manchester. Out of East Granby. I'm going to gather these people into the new place. Into a new land. Into a new place of milk and honey. Go Vernon. I'm going to establish for you. A new land, a new place, and I'm going to revive you. I'm going to put down in you power and authority that you, you forgot about this. You forgot about this kind of Holy Ghost. Woo! <laughs> you forgot about this kind of Holy Ghost that changes you. Hey, that gets inside of you. And when you don't want to do right, it makes you do right. I'm talking about restoration and revival. God said after 70 years, I'm going to regather you. And you're no more going to say, I'm blessing God who brought me out of Egypt. I'm blessing God who brought me into Vernon. I'm blessing God who brought me into Rockville to restore and to revive. How many want to feel the power of the Holy Ghost? Yeah, revive, revive, revive me. Hallelujah. God has shown me. Some of us, we're dry. We're very dry. 
And I've got a word for you later. Hallelujah. But right now, Jesus wants me to let you know. Revival. Revival. In the last days, I'll pour out my spirit on everybody. Everybody. Everybody can receive the Holy Ghost. Young, old, rich, poor, black, white, Chinese, don't matter. Everybody. I'm talking revival. God steps into time, into our period, into this time, into 2021. Jesus has stepped into 2021 just to revive you, Sister Andrew. He saw your tears. He sees your prayers. He knows the crying, the pain and the anguish. He knows the things you said. God, how can you be there? And all this stuff is going on. He said, Wait on me, Lord. Wait on me, child. Wait on me. I got blessing to revive you. We are not people who are bound for destruction. We are people who are bound for glory. For who God is justified, he glorified. And God wants you today to know that revival is coming your way. Revival is in your procession. Revival is here right now. So he told her, I'm going to revive you. I'm going to change you. I'm going to do something for you so you know I'm God. How many want to know God is God? Amen. Then to know God is God, you got to know him more than intellectually. Amen. You got to feel something. You got to feel it. Yes, 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 yes. And not only feel it, you got to be able to walk it. It's the walking that's the validation of the faith. It's not just the knowledge of what it says. It's what I can do. I can do all things through Christ because I'm revived. Jesus is talking to you today about revival. All that the devil meant for your evil, guess what? God going to turn it around for what? For your good. Revival! God has promised. And just like he did in the book of Joel that he's going to restore what the canker worm is eaten what the palmer worm is eaten all that increase you used to have all that joy you used to know and now you feel like you don't know nothing God said I'm going to restore that how many know how good you used to feel in God hey hallelujah God promises you Today is revival. Now is revival. You don't have to sit on your pew or on your seat and worry. Is God going to do it for me? I'm telling you right now. God's already done it. He already started the work. Three weeks ago, I'm standing in St. Francis Hospital, looking out over the east of the city on the 10th floor. Hallelujah, I'm there because I'm sick. But no, I'm there so the Holy Ghost can speak to me. Hallelujah. And he says, I got revival. I got revival for Vernon. I got revival for Rockville. And every child of God that I've given you is there to be a revival with you. Revival starts with you. You got to have your own revival going. And this is what the word of the Lord is coming to you today about revival in the last day. How many know this is the last day? God promised I'm going to pour out my spirit on who? All flesh. Yes, Sarah, you, even you, can be under the anointing. So under the anointing. You don't know what to do with yourself. Cameron, you think you can ask some questions? You let the Holy Ghost get a hold of your tongue. And you will prophesy according to the permission of the Spirit of God. I'm talking revival! 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 I'm talking revival. You've got to be in a position where God can do for you 
what he desires to do. <laughs> As I was up this morning, 3 o'clock in the morning, praising God, worshiping God, and rejoicing in revival. The Lord said, yes, brother. Yes, brother Black. I have revival for my people, but I need them to reach out. I need them to believe. I need them to trust. Just like I promised them that I would restore them after 70 years. You got to believe the promise is unto you and unto your children and unto all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God had called. Has God called you? Has God called you? Has God called you? There you should be a revival. Hallelujah. 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 I'm talking revival. Jesus is talking revival. What he wants to do is change you. He wants to take from you. Ah, that do nothing spirit that's all over you. That spirit of doubt that's sucking you dry right now. It's sucking you dry. I see it sucking you dry. It's just a spirit of doubt. But today I preach revival. Hey, God is going to do something for you that you need to have done. See, God is clear. How many know God knows the thoughts he thinks towards us? Hallelujah. Thoughts of a blessing and not of a cursing. Get Jeremiah 29. Hallelujah. And can I get somebody to read that for me? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Jeremiah 29. You're going to start at verse 10. And you're going to read yourself down through verse 14. I'm talking revival. <laughs> Remember Jeremiah was the prophet to the people. While God was telling them, I'm going to send you into exile. I know you don't believe me. There's a bunch of lying prophets saying I'm not going to destroy Jerusalem. But I'm letting you know I'm going to destroy it. And you too. Hallelujah. If you rebel against me and you don't serve the king of Babylon, you too will be destroyed. But if you believe me and trust me, I'll preserve your life. I will revive you. When you have faith in me and you obey me, I promise you, I will revive you. Come on, Brother Matthew, read for me. Hallelujah. For thus saith the Lord. Thus saith God. That after 70 years be accomplished at yes. Babylon. I yes. will visit you. After 70 years, I'm going to visit you. Yeah, I'm a judge you. Yeah, I'm going to deal with your sin. Just like this morning, God is trying to woo you by exposing your sin, by getting you to recognize there are things I need to confess. And if I need to confess, let me get to the pastor and confess them. Hallelujah, for in confession is my salvation. But if you confess, when you confess, then you put yourself in a position huh, where God can revive you, huh, where God can do things in you huh, that you really need to have done in you. Huh. And so he says, after 70 years, huh, I'm going to bring you back into this land. Come on. And perform my good word towards you. I'm going to perform. I'm going to do the good work. I promise you. How many are looking for revival? God promised you revival. Turn to your neighbor and say, neighbor, God promised me revival. I don't have to ask him for it. He promised it. Come on. In causing you to return to this place. I will cause you to return unto your land that flows with milk and honey. How many know how good God used to be to you? Yes. Hallelujah. I know he's still good to me too. But you know, sometimes we lose sight of the goodness of God. And we start acting like people. We start acting like mere people. And we let the things of life buffet us, knock us around. But Jesus said, what? Read that again. And perform my good word towards you. I'm going to perform my good work towards you. Keep reading. And causing you to return to this place. I'm going to cause you to return to the land that flows with milk and honey. Revival, revival, revival. 
I'm going to give you revival. Keep reading. For I know the thoughts that I think oh, towards you. In this beautiful, in this beautiful, I know the thoughts I think towards you. I know exactly what I'm thinking about you right now, the Lord saying. I know exactly what I feel about you right now. I know you may not feel what I'm feeling, but I'm greater than you. I am not a man that I should lie, nor the son of man that I should repent. It's going to be hard for you to really identify with the depths of my feeling. But God said, I know the thoughts. I'm thinking towards you, the feeling I'm feeling towards you. Come on. Save the Lord. Yeah. Thoughts of peace, yes. not of evil. P thoughts of peace, not of evil. Thoughts of revival. Thoughts of revival. Thoughts of revival. Thoughts of revival. Come on. To give you an expected end. Yes, I have a desired end for you. <coughs> and it's not your destruction. It's your salvation. Keep reading. Then shall ye call upon me. Oh, come on now. Hear this, hear this, hear this. Then... You're going to call upon me. What's going to happen? And you shall go and pray unto me. Yes. And I will hearken unto you. Yeah, you're going to call upon me. You're going to pray unto me. And I'm going to hear you. I'm going to revive you. I'm going to do the things for you that you need me to do for you. How many have miracles they, need one God, they want God to do for them? How many have them? How many have them? How many are willing today to, to, to claim that miracle through revival? How many will say, it's mine, it's mine, it's mine. Because God promised me I'll restore. Keep reading. And ye shall seek me and find me. And ye shall search for me with all your heart. Ah, when you seek me, you'll find me. When you search for me with all your heart. How many of you all want revival? How many want revival? Come on, I want to see your hand. If you want revival, how badly do you want revival? How badly, how badly, how badly are you willing to pray, to pray, to pray, to pray, to fast, hallelujah, until you see revival? Hallelujah. What are you willing to do? How many of all know that with God, you can't talk your way to a blessing? You have to live your way to a blessing. You got to get on your knees when you don't want to get on your knees. You got to bow your face to the floor when you don't want to bow your face to the floor. And you just got to cry out to the God of your salvation and yield yourself to him and say, here I am, Lord. Use me, take me, do with me what you will. And watch and see if God, as he said he would there, when you search for me and seek me with all your heart, you shall be found in me. How many want revival? I got a few more verses there. Or is that 14? Okay. Go ahead. And I will be found of you, saith the Lord. And I'm going to be found of you. And I will turn away your captivity. Yes, I'm going to turn away your captivity. I'm going to revive you where you used to be bound. Now you're going to be free. I want you to look at your pastor right now. Just look at me. Do you see any vestige of bondage in me right now? Do you see any hesitancy in me right now? You don't. Because God has upheld me. God has stepped inside of me. All this week, he's been stepping inside of this body and saying, prophesy, preach revival. Preach it! Preach it! Preach it! Even if they don't get it, you preach revival. Because I came to revive. I came to renew, and I came to restore. Everything you lost, I'm giving it back to you. Every relationship you lost, I'm going to give it back to you. Not because you deserve it, but because I know the thoughts I think towards you. To give you an expected end. I'm talking revival today. Jesus has promised it to you. I got one more scripture I need to read to you. Ezekiel. Because I need to prophesy to you a little bit. Ezekiel chapter 37. 
Hallelujah. And we're going to start around verse number four. And I'll probably just end up paraphrasing it. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. But this is a prophecy where Ezekiel, God brings him to a valley. And in the valley are a bunch of dry bones. These dry bones are God's people who've lost their hope. These bones are God's people who no longer believe God is able to do what he says. These bones are people who've given up on their hope and will not trust in the true and living God so they're dead and very dry. All they can do is lay around in the sun and bake. Have some of you all felt dry? Like you've lost your hope. Well, God had an answer. God had an answer. Son of man, can these bones live? God, thou knowest. Son of man, can the saints in Vernon and Rockville live? God, thou knowest. Then prophesy, preacher, prophesy, prophesy to the winds and cause these bones to come back together so I can bless them. And I'm prophesying and I'm preaching to you. Bones, dry bones, come together. Come together. Dry bones, come together. Let the Spirit of God over, over, saturate you and overtake you. Prophesy, son of man. Preach the good news. All preaching is, is the good news. What's the good news, Sister Issa? Jesus did it all for you. That's the good news. There's no temptation taking you, but that's such as coming to me. God has made a way for you to go through it. God wants to restore your life. God wants to revive you. God wants to show you his power. Drabbles live. And all of a sudden, those bones that were so exceedingly dry begin to move. How many know when you believe the preacher, when you believe the word of God, something happens. Hallelujah. When you really lock in and trust God, something happens. It's just like the day of Pentecost. Suddenly, things started to shake and move. Suddenly, bones started to move. Why? Because I believe that preacher. I believe pastor. When he says these dry bones can live, I believe I can live. I believe I can be revived. I believe I can be strong. I believe I can be alive. I believe. I believe. The bones came back together. But they weren't right. They weren't right yet. They still were missing something. Some of y'all are here. I love you to death. But you're missing something. It's called spirit. Your bones are back together by the grace of God. You keep coming. The, them sinews, the Bible talks about, the flesh, the bone, the cartilage, all that in your life is going to start coming back together. You're going to start looking normal. You're going to start looking like a whole person again, as opposed to a, a collection of bones that has no order. All of a sudden, your life is going to start turning beautiful again. People are going to look at you and say, I want to be like Sister Andrew. People are going to look at you and say, I want to be like Sister Hernandez. People are going to look at you and say, I definitely want to be like Elder Negron because I like what I see. God is going to restore and revive you. But you need more than just the physical appearance. You need supernatural help. How many want the Holy Ghost? 
How many want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? Just like the day of Pentecost filled. How many want that? Hallelujah. And so the Lord said to him, Son of man, prophesy unto the wind. Prophesy unto the spirit. And say, blow through this place. What's that song you sing? Fresh wind. Blow through this place. Fresh wind. Blow through this place. Are you willing right now to say, Jesus, blow through me. Blow through me. As the preacher is preaching, as I'm prophesying, the Spirit of God coming upon you and moving you. Are you saying, preacher? Yes, Lord. Blow through me. Fill me. Fill me. Fill me with the Holy Ghost. Let me speak with other tongues as the Spirit gives utterance. Let me feel the quickening power of the Holy Ghost. I'm talking revival. Revival is the order of the day. Revival is what the Lord Jesus Christ desires to do to you. He wants to preach and prophesy into the wind. Hallelujah. Saying, come. And fill these people. How many here want to be used by the Spirit today? Come on, if you want to be used by the Spirit, I want you to stand on your feet. And I want you to invite the Holy Ghost to move through you. Say, Lord, fill me. Fill me today. Blow through me. Come on. Say, blow through me, Holy Ghost. Blow through me. As the preacher's prophesying, as he's preaching, let your Spirit move in me. I yield. I yield. I yield. To the Holy Ghost. Blow. 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 Through me, Jesus. Right now, Lord. Right now, Lord. Right now. Come on. You prophesy. You prophesy. You prophesy. I will pour out my spirit on all flesh. Your sons. And your daughters shall prophesy. You prophesy your deliverance. You do it right now. You do it. You prophesy your revival. Revive me, Jesus. Revive me. Revive me. I want it, Jesus. I want it today. Hey, and I believe everything that preacher said. I believe you're going to bring me back into my promised land. I'm going into my promised land. My milk and honey. Yeah, it's mine. It's mine. It's mine. It's mine. The promised land is yours. But you've got to claim it. You've got to set foot on it. You've got to put your foot down in that promised land and believe. God promise you, I'm going to restore you. I'm going to restore you. I'm going to revive you. I'm going to do for you what nobody else can do. But I want you to prophesy right now. I want you to prophesy. I want you to speak. See, the Bible says, I believe, therefore have I spoken. You won't speak what you don't believe. Speak it. Speak it. Revival. Revival. Revival in me. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Don't be hesitant. Don't be shy. With boldness, speak revival. Your age doesn't matter. Young, old, rich, poor. Speak it. Speak it. Speak it. Thank you, Lord. 
Yes. My revival. My revival starts now. My revival starts now. Hey, 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 hey. You're meant to be in revival with me, Sister Lamara. You're in revival with me. Hey, yes, Lord. Revival. Revival is all in you. Revival. Hey, shadara mosaka. Yay, use them, Lord. Use them, use them, use them. Ah. Everywhere he goes, use them. Revive. Ah. The power.